All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, welcome back. There is nothing we can't do, and that's going to include integration of exponentials. So I'm going to dive right in here, and I'm going to start with just a little review of derivative of exponentials before we start integrating. So you'll hopefully recall that the derivative of e to the x, well, you've probably guessed it. Remember, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Now, it's usually not that straightforward. They usually have some junk up in this exponent, and we have a new rule for that. We said the derivative of e to the u is e to the u times the derivative of the exponent, so times du. And I'm going to box that in. That's the one you see on the fun quiz all the time. e to the u times du. So like I said, before I go on with integrals, I'm going to do just a couple examples of some derivatives. So let's say I wanted to take the derivative of e to the 4x squared plus 2. So go ahead, try it on your own, and we'll compare in a few seconds. So I'm thinking it's e to the u, so I'm going to leave it alone, and then multiply by my derivative of the exponent, so times 8x. And when you clean it up, we just pull that constant out front, 8x e to the 4x squared plus 2. You've got your answer. Uh, let me throw one more at you. Let's say we wanted the derivative of, let's say, x e to the sine x. So I feel like I've done a great job all year of saying, read it out loud. And some of you, I've probably said it to a million times. Before you take a derivative, read it out loud. But to me, this says x times e to the sine x. And when you say that word times, we better be going product rule. So again, pause me, try it on your own, do your product rule, and we'll see if we get the same thing. So I'm saying first derivative of the second plus the second derivative of the first, so really times one. Now again, you could have this in the complete opposite order, which is equivalent. Um, so it was first derivative of the second, meaning kept this, and the derivative of the exponent. Um, and now I'm just going to clean it up a little. I see a GCF of e to the sine x, so I'm going to pull that out front. e to the sine x, and then I'm left with x cos x. And there's not nothing left over. Don't forget there's a plus 1. We've got our answer there. So hopefully a nice, easy review of derivatives of exponentials. All right, well, let's go ahead and dive into some integrating. Now recall, the derivative of e to the x was e to the x. Therefore, the integral of e to the x must be, well, who did you take the derivative to get e to the x? e to the x. Now, don't forget when you integrate, and this is an indefinite integral without bounds, you have that lovely, lovely, annoying plus c. And there's our rule. Now, just like derivative, you might have some junk up in this exponent. We're going to do the same thing with integrals. So I'll throw a u up there. If I say the integral of e to the u du, I get e to the u plus c. Probably the most important thing is, if you have any junk up there, because you need a chain rule to take its derivative, you're going to need u sub to integrate. And kind of a rule of thumb, I would say 99% of the time, um, we can pick the exponent as our u. Now again, I said 99% of the time, that doesn't mean every time, but most of the time I would say our exponent as our u would work out just fine. So let's go ahead and give a, an example or two a whirl here. Number one, the integral of e to the 3x plus 1 dx. Now, I don't know who to take the derivative to get that answer, so I'm going u sub right away. Take the exponent as your u, and remember, show this work off to the side. If you can start to do it in your head, that's pretty amazing, um, and, and it's encouraged if you can do it in your head, but I'm going to show some work here. Take its derivative, derivative of 3x is just 3 dx. Remember, you want to solve for dx, so I'm going to divide out the 3. So I get du over 3 equals dx. Now, it's called u sub for a reason. We took care of the u, now here comes the sub. I'm going to take what I just got and put that in place of dx. So I'm going to say this is the integral of e to the u, and in place of that dx, I'm putting du over 3. All right, so I'm going to clean it up one more step, just like we did with the other u's, um, u subs. I'm going to pull out the 1 third 
and integrate e to the u du. And just like we said the integral of e to the x is e to the x, the integral of e to the u is e to the u. So I've got that one-third coefficient e to the u plus c. And I'm going to go one step further and clean it up. Oh, baby. I'm going to substitute my u back in, which was this 3x plus 1 up here. So I'm going to say my final answer is 1 third e to the 3x plus 1 plus c. And there you have it. Just a nice simple u sub. So we're going to do a couple more nice ones before we get to that 1% of the time where it doesn't work for us as the exponent. So number 2. The integral of 5x e to the negative x squared dx. All right, so, I mean, if you think you've got it, it really is just a simple u sub. Go ahead, pick your u, take your du, compare it with mine, and substitute it in. So like I said, pause it, try it on your own. Uh, so there I am, I solve for my dx, substituting it in. I'm going to cancel out my x's and pull out the negative 5 halves. So I'm really just integrating that e to the u du. And again, the integral of e to the u is e to the u. So I get negative 5 halves e to the u plus c. And again, lastly, I'm going to substitute that u back in, which was my negative x squared. So I got negative 5 halves e to the negative x squared plus c. Alright, let's go ahead and get a definite integral with some bounds. So example 3, e to the negative x dx, and my bounds are from 0 to 1. So again, this is called a definite integral when you have bounds on the integral. So go ahead and do a simple u sub again, because it's not e to the x exactly, we're going to do our u sub. So you notice I'm just getting negative du is equal to dx. So when I substitute that in here, uh, I've got my negative du, and I'm just going to pull out the negative. Now notice, I did not put bounds on it, because these bounds that I have here correspond with the variable x. That's the variable in the problem. 0 and 1 go with x. And just like we did before, I have u, so I need to get my u bounds. So to get those u bounds, I'm going to take this 0 that I had and plug it into u. So u is equal to negative 0, which of course is just 0, so that's going to be my lower bound. And I'm going to do the same thing with this 1. I'm going to plug that into my u, so I'm going to get negative 1. So my upper bound becomes negative 1. Now hopefully before you integrate, you've noticed that these bounds are backwards. So we're just going to flip our bounds, and we're going to make that negative in front now a positive. So I'm going to integrate from negative 1 to 0 of e to the u du. So if I keep going here, oh boy, where'd it go? Oh no, uh, oops, I just lost it completely. Uh, I think I had uh, negative one to zero of e to the u, du. So when I integrate that, I just get e to the u, plug my bounds in, negative one to zero, upper minus lower, so I've got e to the 0 minus e to the negative 1. And a lot of times we just throw 0 out, but be careful when it's in the exponent. e to the 0 actually is 1. And e to the negative 1 is nothing is negative. I'm just going to rewrite it as 1 over e. And that, ladies and gentlemen, should be my final answer. All right, number 4, the integral of e to the x radical 1 minus e to the x. Now, you might be thinking, what should I pick for my u? Because we did say when you have an exponential, you should pick the exponent 99% of the time. Um, but in this case, if you pick x as your exponent, its derivative is 1. And that's not going to help you out at all. Nothing's going to cancel. So I'm going to go back to my other rule of thumb and pick, you know, that thing that's sitting under the radical. And again, it's just a little trial and error. Um, but use your best get judgment, and if it doesn't work, try something else. So let's pick what's under the radical as our u. Go ahead, take your derivative, solve for dx, see what cleans up. Oh 
Hopefully you've got something similar. I'm going to sub that back in. So I've got e to the x, the square root of u, du over negative e to the x. Now, very conveniently, those e to the x's are going to cancel. Uh, don't forget to pull out this negative. So I'm going to say I have negative integral u to the 1 half du. Now notice, even though this problem started off with e's, when I integrate, I'm not actually even integrating an e. I'm integrating u to the 1 half. So I get u, add my 2 over 2, so I get u to the 3 halves, either divided by 3 halves or times 2 thirds, and leave that negative out front, plus c. And my last step there, I'm just going to plug that original u back in. So negative 2 thirds, 1 minus e to the x to the 3 halves, plus c. All right, folks, stay with me. I've got just two more left for you tonight, so hopefully a nice easy night. So this is at 1% of the time here again where we can't use the exponent as our u. So again, if you picked x as your u, even if you pick this x, its derivative is 1, which is not going to help you at all. So you got to go bigger. So I'm going to go back to that idea where I'm going to pick the term sitting in the parentheses. Okay, and again, if you don't see it at first, that's okay. Pick what you think, try it, and if it doesn't work, try something else. So we know our u should be e to the x. So again, take a minute, pause it, try it on your own, see how far you can get, hopefully not too bad, and check back with me in a few minutes. So hopefully yours is looking pretty similar. I'm going to get my e to the x's to cancel. And just be careful. We still need to go change our bounds because, again, these 0 and negative 1 correspond to the letter x. So to change your bounds, just plug them into x in this u equation. So let me kind of circle that. I'm going to take this negative 1 and put it in this equation. So that gives me an e to the negative 1, which is really 1 over e. I'm going to do the same thing with 0 and plug it into this equation equation, I get e to the 0, and anything to the 0 is just 1. Alright, so watch those bounds. So if I clean this up a little, I'm really just integrating from 1 over e to 1 cosine of u du. So again, this is another example where we started with e's, and in the end, we're not actually integrating the e, we're integrating the cosine. So just talk backwards to yourself. Who do you take the derivative of to get cosine? Hopefully you've guessed it, that would be a positive sign of u from 1 over e to 1. So I don't need the plus c because I have this definite integral. And I'm just going to do upper minus lower. So I'm going to get the sign of 1 minus oops, the sign of 1 over e. Now these aren't values you know, so it's good enough just to leave it like that. Alright, we did it. We've made it to the last problem of the night. Um, and you'll notice here we've got the integral of 5 minus e to the x over e to the 2x. So right away I see no bounds, so I'm going to make sure I have a plus c on the end of this answer. So we've got a couple choices to choose from here. If you try to pick this 2x as your u, we'll take its derivative in, its, in your head. Derivative of 2x is just 2. Is that really going to cancel with anything? I don't think so. Um, now I could use e to the 2x. I'm not really sold yet. What I hope is going through your head is that idea that there's one term on the bottom. All right, so I would make like a beaver and split. I think that's going to be the easiest thing. All right, one term on the bottom. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5 over e to the 2x minus e to the x over e to the 2x dx. And it looks like I was missing my dx there. All right, now again, before I integrate, I'm going to clean it up again. So I'm going to say this is really 5e e to the negative 2x minus e to the x over e to the 2x. Remember, when you divide, subtract the exponents. So that's going to be e x minus 2x is negative x dx. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do two separate u subs here. I'm going to split this up. And I'm going to do a u sub for this one and a u sub for this one here. 
So again, I'm just going to do lots of little steps. I'm going to pull my 5 out, e to the negative 2x dx, minus, I'm going to integrate this guy on its own. So I'm going to say my u is negative 2x, my du is negative 2, so I get du over negative 2. So I've got 5e to the u, du over negative 2. And I'll keep scrolling up here. I've got 5 over negative 2 e to the u du, which of course is 5 over negative 2 e to the u plus c. Alright, now I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to say my u is negative x. My du is negative dx, so I've got negative du equals dx. So I've got the integral of e to the u negative du. Pull out that negative. And the integral of e to the u is e to the u plus c. Now, a couple things to pay attention to here. Let me grab a different color. Um, notice I was subtracting. So these two negatives here and here are going to turn that to a positive. And I don't need to say plus c twice. That's kind of silly. A constant and a constant is going to make a constant. So my final answer I'm going to say is negative 5 halves e to the u. Remember, these two negatives made a positive e to the u plus c. And then lastly, uh, I would just plug that negative x back in. Oops, on this one I believe my u was negative 2x, and on this one my u was negative x plus c. Now, before I call a night, I feel like I've got to say one more thing here. I mean, a couple of you have kind of asked me about it off to the side, and you are 100% correct. Some of you can see what you're going to get right away. For example, if I said e to the 3x dx, hopefully you catch that u is 3x. That means you get du equals 3, and you get du over 3, which means you're going to pull out a 1 third. And I guess my point is, is that some of you have picked up that if you see the 3x, you're pulling out its reciprocal. I'm not pulling out a 3, I'm pulling out a 1 third. And if you catch that, it's going to make your, your math a lot quicker here. Again, I'm pulling out the reciprocal. Likewise, even if you use trig functions, if I said the sine of 6x dx, and I want to integrate that. All right, and again, if you can see this, this is awesome. I'm going to use my 6x as my u. So I get du equals 6dx, which means I get du over 6, which is implying I'm not taking out a 6, I'm taking out a 1 6. So I would say this is 1 6, the integral sine of u. Again, I saw a 6x, so what I should be pulling out is a 1 6. Just a little tidbit if you catch on to that. Well, hope you have a great night, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.